In part 4 of our 6 part series we add a surface normal to our setup so that we can roll on display surfaces and we'll extend our setup so it can handle different p-scale values. So let's continue our work. So now we need to make sure we have uh, two normals. One normal for the orientation of the object and then another vector which will be our surface normal that kind of determines our rotation axis. So let's get another attribute wrangle so we can create our surface normal and we'll do it in a different uh, wrangle so we can simply bypass it or create the attribute in a, another way later on. So let's create a vector attribute called sn for surface normal and for now let's set it to 0, 1, 0, so it points up. And in our solver, we want to rotate instead of our normal attribute around our newly created surface normal. So let's jump back out, reset our simulation, disable the visualizers, hit play, and that is looking great. So the next thing we could be doing since we do have a surface normal now is to displace these animation paths. All right, so let's do that next. So let's create a grid. Make it uh, maybe three by three or five by five. Let's give it 51 rows and columns. Let's hit W to see the primitives. Let's grab a mountain to displace our surface. Get rid of the uh, fractal down here. And maybe lower the amplitude to 0.25. So let's figure out where to put this. So we could either displace our points or even better displace our paths before we extract our points. So let's reorganize this a bit. Let's see what we have here. So let's move this one delete it and move the other calf after our switch so we only have one to worry about and we'll do the displacement of the animation paths before we extract our points. So let's grab a ray sub, plug in our displaced surface. So let's select our ray sub, have a look and delete the expression on the ray and have it look down in negative one and move those a bit out of the way. Let's add a transform to raise our curves a bit before they get projected. AB.15. So now our paths are on the surface. So from now on we can either set the surface normal by hand in our wrangle here or we can grab it from our race up. So let's append a normal to our surface, uh, write the normals on the points. Let's uh, visualize them and to actually make things not more complicated than they need to be. Let's grab a ray sub, get rid of our wrangle with the surface normal. Let's rename our point normal to SN for our surface normal. Let's check our point attributes. That's looking good. So let's connect them to our ray sub and select minimum distance and we don't want to transform our points, but we do want to import our point attributes. 
specifically the surface normal. So let's for now keep the name at n so we can see it in the viewport. Let's see where is it. Ah, we need to change it on our race up as well. So now all of our animated points do have the attributes we need. So that's the surface normal and also the velocity that we need to do the rotation. So now let's change the attribute name back to a surface normal and also on our ray sub. So let's quickly preview what we have. So we'll add a merge sub and wire in our rolling balls and our surface. So let's see what that looks like. Reset the solver, hit play. So one thing you'll notice is uh, that the objects are still stuck in the surface. But before we'll take a look at that, let's first make sure that our setup works with uh, different p-scales because at the moment all our spheres are the same size. So let's quickly disable our ray sub up here and down there. And let's also disable the transform. So all of our spheres are sitting on a flat surface for now. So let's have a look at our attribute wrangle. At the moment we have a constant value for all points. So let's create a float called r for random. Let's use another random function and base it on the point number. Let's make that an integer. Let's add a seat and let's do a fit on our p-scale because the random numbers are between 0 and 1. So let's do a fit 0, 1 between 0 0.05 and 0.15. Let's try 0 0.02 or maybe even 0 0.01. So let's rewind and see if the rotation works with the different p scales. Oh, it's not working at the moment. Remember that we do need a surface normal and we bypassed our race hop up here. So maybe let's switch the order and move the attribute wrangle up. And on the wrangle create our surface normal, which for now is just pointing up. So 0, 1, 0. Let's make sure we are on input 1 on the switch. They're moving a bit faster C at the moment. So on the calf, hit V to bring up the animation editor. Let's change the second keyframe to 0.5. Hit play again. So it's looking like they're rotating correctly in relation to their P scale now. So next we'll offset our paths so our spheres aren't stuck in the ground anymore. All right. So to offset our animation pass, we'll simply add the p-scale to the position of the animation pass. So let's make a bit of room and move our surface out of the way. So for now, let's disable the mountain so things are a bit easier to work with. And let's also quickly think where we want to offset our animation paths. So it definitely needs to happen before the calf. So let's also import our surface normals on our race up here. So we do have them to offset the path along our surface normal and we need our p scale for it. So that gets created down here. So let's simply create that p 
p scale earlier. So let's cut that line, create a new wrangle, and let's move that wrangle up here, paste our p scale, and um, let's see. Oh, we do need our random float as well. So let's paste this above the p-scale. So we do have a p-scale now, but that p-scale is randomized per point and we do need a consistent p-scale per primitive. So later the points from the particle sim will be coming in after the switch. So it definitely needs to be upstream of our switch. So let's generate the random p scales on the primitives. All right. And promote those p scale values from the primitives to our points. Let's move this up a bit. Put the attribute promote after our wrangle and we'll promote our p scale from our primitives to our points. Let's enable the transform again to move our curves up in the y axis before projecting them. Project them. Enable our mountain again for our display surface. And after the ray, we'll put down an attribute wrangle to offset the curves based on their p-scale value. So we do have the p-scale, we do have the surface normal, so we'll add to the position of the points and we'll add the surface normal scaled by the p-scale value. So let's see. Let's also ghost our surface and this is not looking too bad. So now let's see what our setup is doing. Put the display flag on our merge and it's looking like the spheres are rolling on the surface with the correct orientation Maybe let's change the seat up here so we get a different random orientation. Let's also introduce a slider for our seat for the normal and also for our up vector. Let's create those sliders and change both seats. Let's go back change the sliders and let's also maybe decrease our p scales like that all right so that is looking quite nice now that our setup for hand animated objects is pretty much complete, let's finally set up a simple particle sim so we can see if our solver is working there as well. See you in part 5 of the series.